All right, I'm the Flat Rate Master, and today we're talking about prioritizing your tool purchases that's going to be the most benefit to you. All right, so what I mean by that is we all get excited about tools. If you're in this business, you probably like tools. We have to get rid of the emotions of buying tools. We have to buy what's best for what we need. This video is all about helping you decide what you need. Now, a great example of that is you own an air impact. It does the job, it takes wheels off, it takes bolts out, it does the job. You got hook air to it. But let's just say the tool truck has a nice little deal on the Milwaukee uh, one key you're all like, ah, 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 ah. do you need this? Or would you be better served by buying a M12 impact driver to make it faster taking out air filters? That's what I mean. You have to figure out what's gonna work best for you in the long term and the short term. This is a lot of money and it does the same thing this tool does. Yeah, you might get trade in value for it, yada, 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 but it's not, helping you along all you're doing is paying a bunch of money for a tool that you really don't need you have a tool that does that job you have something to get the job done this just is nice how do you decide what you need now obviously everybody tells you in this business if you borrow a tool three times you need it and that is a good rule of thumb but let's say you're not borrowing tools You've got enough tools that you're, you can get the job done, but are you doing it efficiently? And simple things like getting a screw gun impact driver, taking out air filter housings can save you some time, increase your efficiency. There's other things that can increase your efficiency. And you have to figure out what those are gonna be. Now you can watch your coworkers, you can watch guys like me talk about stuff, you know, Erico, plenty of guys on YouTube that you can watch and kind of figure out, I might need that tool. But unfortunately, a lot of kids getting into this business get, you know, blindsided by, ooh, shiny. You know, years ago on Garage Journal, I'm not on there much anymore because, well, if you're on there, you know why. There was a kid on there in school and you know he kept showing off all the tools he was buying and he hadn't even actually gotten to the point where he knew how to use it he'd already bought a snap-on solace ultra i believe and he didn't even know how to use it yet as far as being instructed he might have been able to figure it out as a do-it-yourselfer but he already spent you know I don't think they discount those, so he pr probably spent four grand on it for a tool that he really can't even use yet. And that's the stuff, you know, you, the kids coming up need to figure out. You know, is this going to make you money or is this going to make you money? Starting out, this is not going to make you money. Stuff like this is going to make you money. Now, another example. You need a DVOM. You're in school, you need one. You know, some as part of the program, you know, as part of, part of the program, they give you a DVOM. Part of your tuition, great. But, you know, what happens if you don't have a DVOM? Your school program needs one, or, you know, you break it or whatever and you need a DVOM. Do you run out and buy, do you go out and buy the latest and greatest from Snap-on for a bunch of money? Or do you get a good one that's gonna do the job? You know, I haven't really, other than pairing to my phone, that fancy Snap-on one, really nice, but it does almost the same thing this one does. It has a few other features that are, you know, maybe useful we'll do a review on it but for right now you know if you're coming up in the business you need one of these you don't need one of those 
And unfortunately, a lot of, you know, technicians get, ooh. And unfortunately, and I'm going to point it out, there's tool dealers in this business that prey. And let's be honest, prey on young technicians, getting them into the business. You know, first thing they do is sell them the biggest toolbox they qualify for. Oh, yeah, I can get you a triple bank insert brand. I mean, it, it, this is not a exclusive to Snap-on, Maco, Mac, Cornwell. It's not. It's the dealer himself. Now, my dealers are really good. In fact, John Fantis, my Mac dealer, we've had conversations about that where he will push everything he can not to have a kid buy something that he doesn't need, i.e. big toolbox, etc. So it's important to not get caught up it's important not to get caught up in the woo factor, okay? You're starting out, you don't need this. You don't need a Varus, fact of life. Now what you wanna do is invest in tools that will make you money. And I'm gonna give you a few examples. Simple, you know, tools that make me money all the time. Now they're, they may not make you a penny, and I'm not saying you run out and buy them, but I'm giving examples. This set of Vim long Torx bits. I can't tell you how many times I've used T30 long taking intake manifolds off of Volkswagen 2.0s. You know about Volkswagens, you know that intake comes off a lot. No extensions, perfect length, goes right in there, gets the bolts out, because, you know, Volkswagen makes me money. Can you do it without this tool? There's a possibility of losing a Torx bit way down in and under an intake and then hopefully you've got a backup because it ain't easy to find them, let me tell you. Mountain wrenches. I use these constantly. They make me a ton of money. Every time I do a drive belt on a Honda, one of these is coming out. The 14, usually the 14, comes out to pull the you know, tension off, get the belt out, retention it, all that stuff, makes me money. Now, if you don't work on Hondas, 12, 14 is probably not gonna make you a good bit of money, but it will come in handy if you are, I'm giving examples because I want you to understand, you need the mentality of, is this tool gonna help me do my job more efficiently? Not, ooh, shiny. That's how, that's how you should buy tools. This is gonna make me money right now. And even if you're not on flat rate, this is gonna make me look better in front of my boss because I'm more efficient. That's why we buy tools. Not for the whiz bang factor, but to be a more efficient technician. The faster you can get a job done, the faster you can move on to the next, the more money you can make for flat rate. But if you're not, it makes you look good on paper. So, you know, it, that's the important thing about buying tools. Buy smart. Don't buy, you know, ooh, shiny. I can't stress that enough. You can't buy tools based on drool factor. You need to buy tools by thinking. You know, figure out this tool is going to make me money. If you're doing ball joints all day long and, you know, the shop has a ball joint press, but you share it between five other techs and you know it's kind of beat up, it might make sense to buy a ball joint press because it makes you money. On the other side of it, if you don't ever press in ball joints, why buy it? So hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like it, subscribe. Make sure and hit that bell notification so you get notified when I put out a new video. Comments are always appreciated, and as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.